Okay, in the last video, we talked about our first group of irregular predicate verbs, which we call the cons. We call them the cons because they have consonant changes, which affect how they are spelled in particular the yo form. So if you haven't seen that video, be sure to review that. That's your first group. The second group we call the loafers. Now, I'm referring these to these groups um, of verbs as uh, irregular, or irregular verb gangs. It's just kind of a, a silly way of just saying these are verbs that don't follow the rules. They, they stick together in groups and they behave poorly, so that's why we call them gangs. So now we have the loafers. And the word loafer um, is, is a variation on um, the word we use for stem changing verbs in the present tense, which is a boot verb. Um, if you remember a boot verb, you might have a, a verb like dormir in the present tense, again, not the preterite, but you conjugate it, duermo, duermes, duerme, dormimos, duermen. Okay? And your teacher probably told you that if you were to draw a line around the conjugations that have a stem change, the vosotros also does not have a sentence change, sorry. Um, it would be a boot, okay? So that's why we call these boot verbs. Again, this is present tense, not preterite. But this is where we get the word loafer uh, for this gang of verbs. Their cons are always car, gar, zar, and your loafers are always ir verbs with a stem change in the preterite which is always either E to I or O to you. Now, let me show you what I mean. You have a verb like um, dormir. And the preterite looks like dormi, dormiste, dormio, D, pardon me, dormimos, Dormistes and dormieron. Now, what happened there? I have stem change, O to you, but it's not happening in the boot, it's only happening in the, get it? Loafer. This is a short shoe we're talking about, okay? Only in the third person, both singular and plural, but only in this third person are we having a stem change, okay? Hence the term loafers. Is everyone following? I are verbs, stem change from either E to I or O to you, but it only happens in the third person. Person, Therefore, when you draw around it, it doesn't look like a boot. Like with your present tense, it looks like a loafer. Okay, so again, you have two possible stem changes, E to I and O to you, okay? Dormir is an example of the O to you. Um, a lot of verbs are E to I. There are actually a lot more that do E to I than the O to you. And on page, let's see here, um, 206 of your text or e-text, you have a list of them. Preferir, repetir, seguir, sentir, servir, those are all E to I loafers. Um, the only O to you ones that you'll probably run into, dormir is the most common. Um, morir, which means to die, is also one that will have a murio and murieron. Uh, in third person, but the E to I is a lot more common. So let me show you a couple of those. Servir is one. Again, it's E to I stem change. Okay, so it looks like servi, serviste, servio, servimos, and servieron. Okay, sorry, this is getting a little muddy there. Again, stem change happening only in the third person or the loafer, okay? Now, some of the ER or the E to I stem changes are going to happen in three syllable verbs, such as preferir, repetir. It's important that you understand what the stem is. The stem is not the first E, the stem is the second E. In other words, it's the one closest to the ending. So let me show you what I mean by that, because if you know there's an E to I stem change, but you don't know which E changes, you can have a lot of spelling problems. In a verb like repetir, okay, this is the ending, so this is the stem. This could be a prefix, okay? Um, 
but you want to make sure you're changing this one. So the E to I, okay, is going to be in that closest to the ending E. So you have re peti, re petise, re pi tio, and I'm emphasizing the I. It's pronounced repitio. This is the accented syllable, but the I is what I was trying to emphasize there. Uh, re petimos, re petistes, and re pitieron. Again, the I. So again, you have same change happening in the loafer. So your book will call them verbs with regular forms and a preterite. Um, with the cambio radical, which is a stem chain, P to I or O to U. Um, I call them the loafers because of this particular stem change. I don't want you to think the stem change happens in all the forms because that would be incorrect. Okay, I'm going to pause for a second to erase the board, and then I'm going to show you one more thing. Okay, and one final group. I call these actually the Y-cons. Um, it's a vowel that becomes a consonant. The Y is kind of a consonant vowel depending on where it belongs. Um, but this happens when um, three pronounced vowels end up in a row. Sometimes you have a verb like um, siguieron, okay, where you end up, this is seguir, it's a con, or excuse me, it's a loafer, siguieron. And you have three vowels in a row, and that's okay, because that U actually isn't pronounced. It's sig, it just makes the G be a G instead of a H, as we know from studying the con gang. So, so, um, so siguieron, okay, has three vowels in a row, but you're not having to say, Uye, okay? When you have three pronounced vowels in a row, you have a problem. And so you end up having to change one to a consonant to make the sound work, okay? So let me show you what I mean by that. Creer and oir are two prime examples of when this will happen in the preterite. And the reason is they have two characteristics uh, that these y cons have. They're either an er or an ir verb, and they have two vowels in a row in the infinitive. Okay? It doesn't happen to crear, which means to create, because the AR endings only have one vowel. So you take away one and you put one back. That means you only have two maximum. With the IR endings, as you know, the third person IR endings, yo, yeron, have two vowels. So if you have two vowels in the infinitive and you only take away one of those vowels and you add two vowels in the ending, you have three, and that's not going to work. So you have to change that middle one to a Y, okay? And again, that only happens in ERIR verbs with double vowel infinitives in a third person preterite. Got it? Okay, so that third line, notice this, creí, creíste, creyó, that I changes to a Y. Creímos, creíste, creyeron, oí, oíste, oyó, oímos, oíste, oyeron. It's happening only in the third person, only in these ERIR verbs with double vowel infinitives. Okay? Now, let me point out one more thing here. There are other, there are accent marks that appear in these that would not typically appear in, in the preterite verb endings. And the reason is that we have vowels that are, are strong vowels and we have vowels that are weak vowels. And your I is typically a weak vowel, which means that it kind of gets run over. Okay? Um, if you think about the word dia, for example. Dia has an accent mark. Okay? on the I. The reason is that the I is a weak vowel and the I gets blended with the A sound if it doesn't. So the reason I say dia instead of dia is that that I has an accent. If it didn't, we would say dia, okay? You would hear the I, but it would get blended into what's called a diphthong with the A, okay? So a lot of times your I will get an accent when it's trying to maintain its own syllable, and that's what happens with these verbs. Crayi, accent, that's typical in the IR and in, in ER endings. Creiste, that's not typical. It's because that E is a strong vowel and the I needs that accent to keep its emphasis. Same thing here, same thing there. Okay? It's happening over here too. Your strong vowels are A, ah, O, and I don't know why I did that out of order. Um, it's A, A, and O. I'm going to mess that up because this is really sloppy. Okay. <clears throat> We're just going to exhibit some of my terrible art real quick, okay? Okay, this guy, pretend he has on American Eagle Outfitters shirt, and he's strong. He's got, those are muscles, by the way, okay? All right, and then this guy over here, um, sorry to the U of I fans, 
and this is a terrible drawing. Um, but we'll just say he has a U of I shirt on, okay? So A, E, and O are strong vowels, and U and I, or I and U, okay, are weak. All right, so he's sad because he can't lift even the bar in the weight room. Okay, so anyway, um, so A, A, and O are strong vowels. A, or no, excuse me, U and I, or U and E, are weak vowels. And what that means is that when you have a weak vowel next to a strong vowel and you don't want it to blend, you have to have an accent mark. So that's why these have accent marks, if you care why. Um, you need to remember that they do, obviously, when you're spelling, um, but that's how those work. Again, this is from page 206 in your text or e-text. The book calls it, um, you know, verbs that change from I to Y in the third person, singular and plural. The book doesn't tell you a lot about the why behind it, so this is that explanation. So there you go.